What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another Football Manager video but we're not in FM20, we're not in FM09, today we've gone forward in time and we're in FM2010, I guess that's forward in time in relation to the last throwback FM video of course, we're still 10 years in the past here. But yes, today we're having a look at Football Manager 2010 and can I just start off by saying a massive thank you to you guys for your really really positive reception to the FM09 video. I, I wasn't sure what to expect, kind of doing a one-off throwback video, but you guys enjoyed the nostalgia trip. So uh, yeah, hop in the time machine with me again, as we are going to be looking at FM2010. I'm excited for this. This should be really, really fun. I will say now, I have holidayed forward 10 years in this game, and uh, I was thinking about doing a video where we look at how Football Manager 2010 predicted, you know, football would be 10 years after its start. Date. You know, what would football look like in 2019, according to this version of Football Manager? If you would like to see that, let me know if this video gets, I don't know, let's say 300 likes. We'll have that coming your way in the next few days. I feel like it'll be really fun to have a look. But yes, today we're going to be just having, you know, our one-off Let's Play thing that we kind of started last time out. Um, someone mentioned on the last episode that if you hit Cancel Wizard, you can select more than three nations. I've done it here in FM 2010. It seems to work. So that's cool. I've got a load of leagues selected here. Realistically, we're not going to have time to look through all the top leagues, although all the leagues that you could see I had loaded there um, were simulated when I holidayed into the future just to see what this game thought the world of football might look like. Um, I think with this series, obviously, it's one-off stuff. Um, with some of the newer games, we may load up some of the old YouTube saves that I've had or streaming saves that I've had, you know, during the time that Work the Space has existed. But, of course, at least in the next few iterations of Football Manager... Uh, I, this is this is predating YouTube. FM, I think 12 was the first one when I did a Football Manager video on YouTube, although FM 13 was when this channel started. Um, so we're going to put our hands in the Football Manager guns. We're just going to hit randomise and see where we got thrown out. Have a look around the gameplay, see how things have changed. And all that good stuff. We'll just go with this manager profile that I've done. I don't want to start unemployed. Man, this is a weird looking Premier League, isn't it? When you look at it, the likes of Hull, Bolton... Pompey, I think, are in here as well. Yeah, they are. Right. Is there a randomite? There is. There's a pick a league and club for me. Football manager. Where are we going this episode? Imagine if it imagine if it picks Southampton again. Getafe with a Burger King sponsor. I'm I'm all about it. Let's go, Getafe. Predicted to finish 18th. Let's just call it Getter. Oh, I can't say I've ever managed in have I managed in Spain on the channel? I don't think I have. Of course, La Liga was licensed in Football Manager around this era. I feel like the league as a whole was a slightly lower profile league. It was probably easier to get, you know, the um, what do you call it, the sponsor, well, not the sponsorship, the licenses for the league back then. We've been told we should do an inter squad friendly. You know what? We will accept that. Can I start off by saying that compared to FM twenty nine uh, oh nine? This feels way more familiar. This is kind of the UI that existed until they went with the sidebar that obviously is now just the staple of Football Manager. This feels... Uh, everything's less centralised. It feels more familiar. Not 100% familiar. Uh, aim is apparently attempt to avoid relegation. Let's have a look at our team here. Who have we got? Who is our most valuable player? It is Pedro Leon. We've also got... We've got Soldado. He's actually pretty good. And the polygon is on the player profile pages. I feel at home. Suddenly this feels more familiar, doesn't it, compared to last year. So in terms of the features, actually, though, I added in this year's Football Manager versus the 09 one. Obviously, you can see the UI had some major changes. Um, it didn't have a ton of massive sweeping changes. They just continued to develop the 3D match engine. And um, Sports Interactive overhauled the database editor to make it so you could add more playable leagues to countries that already had leagues playable. So this was the first year where you could go beyond, you know, you know, the seventh tier of English football or whatever it is that's loaded by default, and you could really deep dive. I will say now, this just feels way more familiar to me, which is odd to say. It is the confirm button in the bottom right. It feels like most of the stuff is. Of course, last year, or well, last year in Football Manager, but the last episode, I guess, in terms of this series... Um, it was weird, you might remember, it was kind of three columns almost, all the UI. We've gone now to this kind of bar at the top that has everything that you could ever want. And it just feels nice. 
if we look at La Liga, is there a way we can look at like the best 11? I don't think this existed for a few more years, kind of the media dream 11. I mean, past winner was Barcelona. Let's have a look at their squad. So they've got 22-year-old Messi. They've got Zlatan as well. Look at that hair. Wow. It's, it's a thing of beauty. Look how insanely good he is. It's nice to have the polygon, isn't it? Um, I will say I have already started with the window scale down this time. Football Manager's UI in the older games was really, really small, which is odd. I feel like that might be a resolution thing, of course. I'm playing on a 1920 by 1080 monitor. That wasn't really a thing back then. You can see Messi here. I want to say only 22. Uh, only 22, uh, 22. You can see here he had 12 goals and 38 assists. If we look at his history, he got 23 goals last year. So this was kind of the first year where he was really starting to look like one of the best footballers in the world. I say that, like, in football manager terms. I feel like he looks a lot better than he did last video when we took a look at him. I'm trying to remember, was this the year when Ronaldo moved to Real or was that the year after? This was the year. Wow, he, he, he kind of looks the same, doesn't he? Look how nuts he is. It's weird, actually. I don't feel like Ronaldo's polygon has changed that much. Maybe that's just me. It, it looks the same to me. Let's have a look. So, well, what screens? Let's have a look at our squad. So this squad screen feels kind of familiar to it. It's now Tactics. Again, no no player roles yet. Player roles came in FM 14, I want to say. Was it 14 or 15? It must have been 14. That was like one of my favourite changes. Although at the time, I was a big fan of the sliders. Like We looked at them last time. This is not going to have changed that much. Um, as I said, this year of Football Manager was received as a game that didn't change enough. Um, although, I feel like with Football Manager, I just look for a little bit of polish every year. But yeah, it looks like this stuff is all kind of similar. Is there roles and duties? Oh, I know what. Okay, I think they added roles and duties in this year, maybe. Um, but then what they did was um, the slider still existed, so you could still change quite a lot. So if we go to instructions, players. So yeah, you had you had roles here. So you've got what options you got for a wing back? You've got full back, defense, support, attack, or you've got wing back. So no inverted wing back, no complete wing back. What about centre backs? So of course limited defender. I totally forgot that no nonsense defender was called limited defender until a few years ago. What about strikers? There's way less roles. Of course defensive forward. That's now what pressing forward is. That was another recent change. So yeah, roles were added, but then the thing was you could, if I'm not mistaken, you could hit advance, right? And then you could really, like, tailor these roles. But obviously, this was removed eventually. I, my, my understanding is that basically if you're a real-life manager, you, you won't tell your player exactly how many notches of attacking to be. You know, you never have that degree of control. A lot of that, you know, obviously you can drill it into a player, but that can be achieved through instructions in terms of how they are now in Football Manager rather than a really arbitrary slider. Some people forget how broken the match engine used to be, or easy it was to break. There were some crazy like tactics that flew around around this time in Football Manager where you could just completely break things, like the defensive AI just wouldn't pick things up. It, it was a weird time for Football Manager. But yeah, this stuff hasn't changed that much since the previous year. Um, I think with the, I was looking through, you know, the features because people mentioned last video that we did. You know, really, I should read up on what the new additions were to the game, and then we can look at those specifically. I feel like the big changes this year were, as I mentioned, the database changes, and then just the UI, which feels way more familiar. Um, so press conferences. I feel like this question <laughs> comes in every year. I know some people say the text hasn't changed ever. I'm just going to storm out. Some people say the text hasn't changed ever. It's, it's one of those things where I understand why people might want the text to be slightly adjusted every year in Football Manager, but you've got to remember the game's localised into a load of different languages. Every time you change one or two little words, you've suddenly got to relocalize all the lines. And when you think about all the press questions, all the commentary lines in the match engine... Just everything like that, it would just take forever to like translate it all. I know um, sometimes female footballers is a thing that comes up in Football Manager. I would love to see it, but you've got to think about how all those lines would also change from he to she for like players. Man United's offer for Gago has been accepted. Real Madrid, what are you doing? Do we have any money? Player search, right. Akin Fayev. Akin Fayev was just like a go-to player for so many years in Football Manager, wasn't he? 
I'm looking on this screen for our transfer budget, and obviously in the newer games is up here. It's down here now. We've got £3 million to spend. Eden Hazard, have you moved at this point? No, you're still at Lille. Look how good he is. He was very good back in the day, was Eden Hazard. Let's get a scout report. Let's see what scout reports look like. That was one thing that we didn't look at last time. Jack Collison. <laughs> Kapue. Gareth Bale is injured. Hmm. I will pretend to be shocked. Are these players that are like considered realistic? I can only assume that it is. Yeah, okay. So these are realistic players, apparently. Let's have a look through these. Hadanes. Obviously, this is prior to his move to Lazio, right? Yeah, he's still playing. Age 24. In um, in Brazil. Lots of Brazilians, actually, when you scroll through here. Fred, Sandro, Tyson, Helder Postiga. There's loads of names here that are just throwbacks. Moussa Dembele, how good were you this year? Pre pretty good, of course. This was back when he was more of a striker than a centre mid. Dimitri Payet. Neymar's there. Can we sign Neymar for Getafe? 17 and he's that good, right? Santos. Um... Apparently he's indispensable. Now, I can't afford him right away, so I'm going to have to add in some clauses here. Over 48 months, we'll give you 25 million, but I'm only giving you 3 million now. I'm looking for the suggest offer button. That's not a thing. Let's submit that offer for Neymar and see if they accept it. Right, we can get into a match. I think the player rules were new this year. I don't remember seeing them on this screen when we played last, year, uh, last year's game, FM09. It's weird seeing like the duty, but not the actual role. Like, it's bizarre. I guess team instructions we should look at. Philosophy, fluid, attacking, why not? More direct, more roaming. This feels so dated. Obviously, some of these just haven't, like, they're not that different. But obviously, just the, the newer way it's laid out in Football Manager, I just take for granted. It was more spreadsheety football manager back at this point. So this, yeah, all of this stuff really hasn't changed since what we saw before. This is the interesting thing with doing this mini series where we play through all the additions of the game, is that I can kind of you know micro see all the changes as they happen. So the 3D was apparently updated this year. The ball is still really really small, isn't it? Boateng, where are you going inside? Lovely little play. Turns this man, hits it. Why did the post... The ball just went through the back of the net. Did, I, did anyone else see that? Or was that just me? So there's main stand. Do they add in any new ones here? Touchline. Was this a new angle? I don't remember this from last video. I think that was new. There's also one called sideline. Hmm. That's a weird angle. I guess the camera's on a rail here and moves back and forth. I will say it does look better than last video. Like, the animations look slightly better. Like, they're still very ice skatey, But it looks it looks okay. Okay, the defender just did a flip. Can we just enjoy this defender? We're going to watch it again. It was a fun thing to see. He... Oh, he didn't do the flip that time. I swear it showed, like, a frame of him being upside down. Ball whipped in. Three players go for the ball. We deal with it. One thing that I want to talk about, actually, just while this is playing, because I've heard it come up a few times around FM20, is people don't seem to understand what the match engine is and what the graphics engine is for Football Manager. Now, I'm going to explain this in very basic terms. This is the match engine, like the player coordinates, not the visuals, like what you see here. This this is the match engine, right? It's The, the match engine is the AI-driven decisions that each player is making, and the reason Football Manager can't look like FIFA is because all of these players are making these individual decisions on the fly and you know they're weighing up all the options there's a lot of calculations going on on a pc that are quite intensive um and basically the graphics engine is the 3d stuff right and all this is doing is it is mapping animations to the 2d coordinates that move around like what well, that's why when you see the 3D stuff it doesn't always line up with what happens in the match engine there was kind of it was an older thing really but sometimes a foul would happen in the box or at least it looked like it happened in the box in 3D but if you actually switch to a 2D view it happened outside the box and it was just because of the way the animations line up so i've seen a lot of people complaining about the fact the football manager 2020 match engine looks the same 
having played a decent number of games, the AI stuff is different in terms of, um, you know, just decision making, um, cross is actually working now, you know, you don't get 9% completion, at least in the build that we were in, that was a thing that I think a lot of people leveraged as a complaint to FM19, but this is, you know, the graphics engine, what you, what you see in terms of 3D, the match engine is the AI that drives it. I just want to get like clarify that because I think some people don't understand the difference. So it's okay to say the graphics engine looks the same. And if you think the match engine looks the same, fair enough. If you feel like it just looks like the matches are playing out the same. I've had a you know a decent amount of hands on and I could notice some pretty significant differences to the actual match engine. But I'd say if you think if if you're someone who leaves a comment, <laughs> I don't know why I'm putting this in this video here, but if you're someone who's like the match engine always looks the same. Like, please explain what elements of the match engine look the same. You know, the graphics engine hasn't changed that much this year. The match engine, I think, has. Anyway, I realise this is like game design talk stuff that many of you do not actually care about. Let's turn up the match speed here. And I'm going to turn off highlights. Because this is just a pre-season game. Really, I just wanted to have a look through things. I want us to try and sign Neymar. The good news is we're beating Getafe B comfortably. We're, we're the best in the game. We are the best in the game. The highlight I've turned off highlights and we still get to watch a highlight. I like the fact it says replay in the top left. That is very kind of 2010. That was a long highlight as well. I kind of missed this DVD player like bar at the bottom. Boateng, what are you going to do? Soldado, in some look at the football. It's liquid. I love it. What panels have we got? Is there anything different about the panels? Oh, match information. I mean, that's just the same. It's nice to see the weather, though, right? What other stuff? You can see, obviously, formation motivation. So this is body language, right? This is just a different thing. But obviously, this was a lot more basic in terms of you couldn't do shouts and stuff on the fly during games to try and cheer a player up. Or if they had their head down, you know, get them better. Has, is our assistant telling us we're being overrun in midfield? No. Oh, this is cool. So you can look at, like, the last 5th, 30 minutes. This might well exist in FM20 and FM19, I realise. I really don't experiment with these panels. But I feel like with these videos, the stuff that I should be poking around that I don't normally look at... Uh, of course, if the stuff that I don't cover in this video and you'd like to see more of the, you know, retro throwback FM videos going forward, do let me know. Can I just leave the game? Oh gosh, what have I do? I've, I've managed to get the calendar up whilst we're in this screen. This is weird. I kind of like the wide screen view, even though it's very difficult for me to see. So I can't imagine how hard it is for you guys. So touchline instructions, you can give little things there. Is there more team talk options? No. So you don't even get a tone. I didn't even notice that before. Tell the squad you're thrilled. Look at that. I'm delighted, boys. Who's been the big performer? It's been Pedro Leon. He's actually very, very good, isn't he? Free kick taking wizard. 16 flair. 15 passing. Where's vision? Oh, crap. Vision was creativity. Again, sort of little change. That happened a few years ago, but forgot about it. If there's anything, by the way, that you notice that is a major change as well, let me know it, because there is going to be stuff that I inevitably miss. Go on, Torres. And then he dispossesses. Does this look better than the previous years? I mean, it looks more fluid. Oh, my Lord. That was an effort. Um, it looks more fluid in terms of... It, the animations feel smoother. The last um, kind of FM09 video when I was watching it, like it just, it wasn't jittery or anything. It just, I don't know. It felt like the frame rate of the animations just wasn't very good. They're playing really narrow, or is the pitch really wide? I feel like the player's scaling on the pitch is off. Because if he's laid down right, I don't know. Maybe that is. I'm now like six yards. Is he? Is, if that's six yards, he seems very small for the pitch. The pitch scale doesn't look right to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I? I'm answers on a postcard. 
the keepers look very, very small relative to the pit, the pitch as a whole. But maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe it's a big pitch. I just noticed we've got stadiums. Of course, they've got seats this year. There, there's an advancement. Seats on the pitch. I actually quite like the sideline view. I say seats. Can they be counted as seats? They kind of look like steps with just a black texture on them. It's a step forward from the, the slants of grey that there were in the last video. Manu Delvara Moral. Hits it. Ooh, it's an effort. It's an effort. Where's the linesman going? I guess he's making sure they've subbed the keeper. I don't I don't ever recall seeing a goalkeeper get subbed in a replay in football manager. Like physically seeing the swap happen. I feel like we've just seen a rare thing. It's like a shiny Pokemon or something. Pedro Leon. Oh my word. I want a highlight of that. Highlight of that one, please. I'm hoping that switching that counts. It's going to be pretty much the last kick of the game. I want behind the goal. Behind the goal. I've got the wrong... There isn't a behind the goal angle. Let's go vertical. I've accidentally clicked on an advert as well in the advertising hoardings and the Sports Interactive website's been opened up. Pedro Leon. Oh, I mean, okay. From that angle, it just looks like the keeper's made a bad, bad misjudgment. I'll confess. We were simply brilliant. I've just realised, the game, you might notice there, the game didn't show the kickoff or end of match highlight. That is actually something that is coming back in FM20. If you play on key highlights, you won't see the pointless kickoff and pointless end of game highlight. So that's cool. So we've got Hazard scout report here. There isn't too much difference between Hazard and Watan uh, and Gal Albin. It could be a lot better though. View report card. Oh, look at this. Fairly ambitious. He'll develop well. Well, Eden Hazard. Um, he'll, ne he'll never be able to challenge in the air. I kind of like the really wordy scout reports. I don't think I meant to say that. But I do like them. Comment on player. Tell the press you think he'll be a star player. Admire him. It's just, I just feel like admiring him. He's so dreamy. Right, let's try and sign Neymar. <laughs> Signing Neymar for Getafe. It's an adventure. Can we make it happen? It's been it's been rejected. If I know I could like feel out how much they want for him. I guess the logic is that I scout and then maybe we get given a price. How about this? I'll I'll bid you twelve point five million. I feel like we probably can't afford him at Getafe. Oh, I just noticed regen faces. Look at that. Interesting. They have come a long way. Regen faces went through this weird phase in the last few years where I do think they've got worse compared to like FM 16 or 17, but they are now like properly modelled in 3D. And with them being now modelled in 3D, obviously future like in the future they should only get better, whereas you're always kind of limited as to how good they would be when they were just 2D. Uh, Neymar has the potential to play at a similar level to Soldado. <laughs> I love that. Um, he'd be very interested in joining us. He can, we can sign him in three, in four years on a pre-contract. I need an asking. I need to know how much they might want for him, though. Game. How how are, are our odds working? I can just save items as a note. Two thousand to one. I mean, Leicester did it. Why not I? We've been offered Martin Olsen by Blackburn. Olsen's actually very good in football manager this year. He looks pretty decent at 21 years old, the young Swede. Also, it's just like six youth caps rather than like what youth caps they are. Apparently he's been linked with Atletico Madrid. Why are Blackburn offering him out? What's the catch? There's got to be... Uh, okay, he's just unhappy, I guess. Oh, El Hadjouf and Chimbonda. Let's be honest, one of the best fullbacks in world football history. Wigan Hall of Famer, allegedly. I realise a lot of people are just going to be like, Pascal who? Exactly. And I see Dallas v Schalke. I mean, they're, they're the friendlies that people live for. 
I don't really know what else to show in this video because I feel like it didn't change that much between years. Like, obviously, the obvious change is the fact that the modern day kind of UI layout kind of starts here. FM09 felt very, very different. This feels familiar to me. All the clickables, like confirming stuff, are all in the bottom right. Obviously, you can see here, like, lots of these screens are just similar to how they are now. The manager profile is a little bit different. Our contract expires in 2011. Need to get that side out. Ezekiel has got time for a new contract. I mean, he's not very good, is he? Have we got Have we got any good new gens? It's regens, not new gens. Regen. They're not. They're not called new gens. Sports Interactive need to stop making new gens try and happen. What's that mean? Where it's like stop making new gens try and happen. They're regens. You, you, I don't know my memes. Yeah, I think most people know the thing I'm quote referencing here. If you're sat there going, what's a meme? Don't worry about it. So staff members announcing a desire to join my backroom staff. That's interesting. Is that, I don't feel like that's in anymore. Sergio Jimenez think, uh, thinks that one of our players wants a new contract. 20-year-old Alberto Ascasi. So how does the contract stuff work? He wants £300 a week. Steady on, mate. Can you add in three-year bonuses? No, you can't. Like optional three-year extensions. Minimum release clause? No, get that out of there. Wait, can you not remove a clause? Is that not a thing? Although I am in I am in um, Spain where they were kind of enforced, if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a quick look. If we look at world, and then overview, so you can see here the top players at the time. So we've looked at Ronaldo and Messi, Kaká. Oh my gosh, Kaká was insane at this time. Damn, he's pre he's pretty good. He's, I'm not gonna lie, Kaká was pretty good back in his day. Ike Casillas. Let's have a quick look at him. I mean, he looks good, doesn't he? Xavi. This was like the year where La Liga was just the best league in the world. And then you got Julio Cesar at Inter. Inter were really good at this time as well. Players like Samuel Eto, Cambiasso, Schneider, Melito. Yeah, good team. Mario Balotelli as well. An 18-year-old Mario Balotelli. One for the future, right. Let's try and sign Neymar before we sign off today. Inter made an offer for Albin. How does the negotiation work on this? View offer. I mean, it kind of looks the same. They want to offer, like, lots of money over time. So you can remove these. Maybe you could remove the um, clauses, and I'm blind. Make new proposal. 20 million plus. They're not going to appreciate that, are they? No, me, I've probably missed a Neymar item. Albin's unhappy with the manager. Yeah, mate, you can be unhappy with me all you want. I, cruel to be kind. Yeah, our, our other Neymar bid was rejected. That was on the 10th. How quickly does time advance in this game? So it's the 24th and I hit continue once. Is it just going to go to the 26th? It is. Just a lot less stuff to do between games. The stuff just continues way quicker. That's interesting. Stuff that I hadn't even really thought about. It's one of those big balancing acts, I feel like, with football managers. People want Some people want more stuff. Some people just want to get through seasons and matches quickly. And it's like, where do you find that balance of adding in new stuff for the people who are like, I want new stuff in Football Manager, but then how do you keep happy the people who think that it's got too complicated and there's too much micro stuff to do? I don't think there is a way you can balance it. I think you can end up... Annoying one party or the other, or potentially both. There's a World Cup in 2010, isn't there? That'll be interesting to see what happened after the World Cup in FM 2011. We'll have a look through, um, you know, some of the squads and stuff, I imagine, for that. As I mentioned at the start, if you would like to see a video where we look at the world of football 10 years in the future, according to FM 2010, let me know. 
I'm going to wrap things up here. I mean, my big takeaway from this video is the fact that Football Manager kind of got his modern day UI at this point. This feels way more familiar than I was expecting. I realise now that we're using like the light skin. Was there a dark skin at this point? Last last thing to check real quick. There was a dark skin, and you could still pick the old FM skins. Interesting. I want to have a look at dark, and then I want to compare the skins that we've used today. So they, I, I think I used this when I used to play. It actually looks quite nice. If we go to preferences, and let's have a look at FM 2009. Yeah, see, this, this feels so weird to me. Not a fan of this. This, th no, take take me back. Take, this is why FM09 scared me when we went back and played it last time. 2010 is like safe, comfortable, and familiar. Whatever that was scares me. Right, yeah, I'm gonna wrap things up here, guys. Sorry, this was this was very rambly. I feel like I I, I am a little bit concerned with this series that it's going to turn into me just looking through screens, going, oh, that's different. That's not. So if you've got any ideas for how I might be able to spice up you know, what we're doing, do let me know, of course, if it didn't really bother you and you just enjoyed it anyway, let me know that too, maybe I'm worrying about absolutely nothing, and, uh, well, that is going to be all from me today, yes, do drop a like on it, as I said, 300 likes, and we'll get an FM2010 predicting the future video out, uh, if you are new to the channel, of course, do subscribe, Football Manager 2020 content coming in hot in the next week or two with the beta starting up, and uh, yeah, that is going to be all from me today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.